our beloved Father, please come down and meet us. We are waiting on your touch. Open up the heaven, shower down your presence. We move on to your great love. We won't be satisfied with anything ordinary. We won't be satisfied at all. Open up the sky, fall down like rain. We don't want blessing, we want you. Open up the sky, and fall down like fire. We don't want anything but you. Our beloved Jesus, we just want to see you in the glory of your life. Earthly things don't matter. They just fade and shatter when we're touched by love divine. We won't be satisfied with anything ordinary. We won't be satisfied at all. Open up the sky, fall down like rain. We don't want blessings, we want you. Open up the sky and fall down like fire. We don't want anything but you. Let's go to the throne room of God this morning. Here we go, let's go to the throne, the place where we belong, right into his arms. Here we go, let's go to the throne, the place where we belong, right into his arms. Here we go, let's go to the throne, the place where we belong right into his arms here we go let's go to the throne the place where we belong right into his arms we won't be satisfied we won't be satisfied with anything ordinary we won't be satisfied at all we won't be satisfied with anything ordinary. We won't be satisfied at all. We won't be satisfied with anything ordinary. We won't be satisfied at all. One more time, we won't be satisfied. We won't be satisfied with anything ordinary. We won't be satisfied at all. Open up the sky. Open up the sky. Fall down like rain. We don't want blessings. We want you. Open up the sky. Fall down like fire. We don't want it. Open up the sky, fall down like rain. We don't want blessings, we want you. Open up the sky, fall down like fire. We don't want anything but you. Earthly things don't matter, they just fade and shatter when we're touched by love divine. 
We won't be satisfied with anything ordinary. We won't be satisfied at all. We won't be satisfied with anything ordinary. We won't be satisfied at all. Open up the sky. Open up the sky and fall down like rain. We don't want blessings. We want you. Open up the sky and fall down like fire. We don't want anything but you.
thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. And I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know that we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say. good father. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Lord, you're perfect. You are perfect. 
perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. One more time. Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. You're a good, good Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all your ways, Jesus. You are perfect in all your ways. Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To Understand it, Father. You're still good and perfect. You're good and perfect. Good and perfect. You're good and perfect. Thank you, Jesus. Take some time where you are. Take some time for just a moment. Center yourself. I think sometimes this routine has gotten a little bit casual, if you will. Maybe in your home it's easy to just kind of have it play into the side while you're eating some cereal or eating lunch. Maybe it's easy to have it service play into the side while you're doing some other activities or maybe even watching something on TV but I'm calling all the church for a few moments to shut all the distractions out families if you will please just center yourself for a moment focus for just a few moments I know you probably already have during this worship set thank you but do it again focus yourself for a moment close your eyes give your heart in worship to the Lord Lord, as a congregation, wherever we are, we center ourselves and we focus for a moment. From our heart, we say we love you. We're thankful you're our good Father. We consciously push aside all the distractions, all the confusion about what's going on in our world set ourselves on the solid rock of Jesus Christ and our faith who he is and how he is and what you are Jesus to us thank you God for being a good father thank you for being a good father I pray today that in this moment someone somewhere would experience the peace of the Holy Spirit. That by the ability and the power only of God's presence, that there would be a peace that floods someone's soul right now. God, would you do that? 
assuring us that everything's okay, assuring us that everything's all right. The distractions and all the noise will fade and your spirit has settled our soul. And we bless you, Jesus, and thank you for these few moments of rest and focus on you. job guys so when you're on this side of the camera there's this pressure this hurriedness that you you feel like you got to just hit all the marks and you got to make everything right and you, you, there's this pressure to to make everything kind of polished as it comes to the camera we, we're not even trying that uh, I mean we're I the the heart behind what we're trying to do here at our church is make this experience this virtual experience as relatable and real and honest and pure and natural and normal as possible, all right? So hopefully, in moments like that, when we just let, let things happen and we just settle into it, there's a peace that came in my soul right then of just, okay, we're, we're worshiping the Lord and we're distant, but we're experiencing God together. Um, so... Thanks for your patience with that. Um, it, it's so important for us to be together like this um, as much as we can. And kudos to all the other pastors and churches who are doing the same thing. And many people, man, I was flipping through Facebook a little earlier right before I came in the room here and stopped and looked at some other live, um, live presentations of services. And man, the church is killing it. The church is doing a good job. And, you know, some people have technology and great advancements that they can pump this stuff in and it's crystal clear like a hollywood production and some guys they're in their they're in their literally in their bedroom holding the phone preaching the gospel i mean you got you got just the the spectrum of it all and what an what an incredible glorious time to live in and everybody should be super encouraged and thanked for work the work they're doing and you guys did it you guys did it today um i don't know if you know this but when i started service I'm looking around, and everybody's picture is on the chair that they normally sit in, okay? Um, yeah, yeah, I see everybody's face this morning, so it's pretty cool. Uh, I, I said this a moment ago earlier, and it was funny. Um, what you post on Facebook can be ripped off. It can, it can be downloaded and printed because it's all over the room. I'm not going to move them. 
are not going to move them. We're not going to move them, all right? We might add some to them, but let's leave them all here so when you come back to the sanctuary, you'll see, you'll see your mug shot. <laughs> you'll see what I'm seeing, and it's beautiful. I walked around, and some of you wrote letters of encouragement, and um, really means a lot to me. Thank you. Thank you to Michelle and everybody else who was involved in doing this. Thank you very much. I personally said this too earlier. I personally needed this today. Thank you. Um, don't forget about all the platforms. I feel like a broken record. This has um, been said a lot. Don't forget about our church app. You can download that. Apple Store, Google Play Store. Don't forget about our YouTube channel. Everything is archived on Facebook. You can give. Don't forget to give. Um, you've been faithful during this time. Please continue to be faithful. We're, we're, we're having to support what we're doing with, with your giving, so we really appreciate that. So be faithful in your giving. You can give online through our um, website, through the church app. You can mail the check to the church. Many of you are dropping by the church and dropping, off, uh, dropping by the church to give your checks. Thank you. Thank you. That's huge. Uh, please continue to do so. I don't know if you're counting, but I am on my calendar. This is the eighth Sunday we've done church like this. The eighth. I can't believe it. The first Sunday, the first Sunday we um, had everybody stay home that may be having symptoms or if you were afraid of being exposed. The second Sunday, we shut it down completely and went virtually. So this is the eighth Sunday that this nasty, terrible thing has caused the problems. Um, uh, and we've been having services like this. There seems to be a glimmer of hope on the horizon. I know you've all heard it. Um, some of our neighboring states are opening back up, and we're expecting to hear from the mayor and the governor this week about what that looks like for us. Um, I know that we probably will not be able to all come at the same time the first Sunday we're allowed to gather. We're probably going to be on a restricted number of people that can come. We've already started talking about some ideas of how to do that. We're going to get as many people in this building gathering again as soon as we can, okay? So if you're thinking about coming and you're, you're wanting to gather back again, we are too. And we're, we're going to do everything we can to meet the standards that are put before us and uh, do the best we can to uh, facilitate that. So be looking for information coming forward as soon as we know what is allowed. Um, I absolutely... 100% love you all, and um, my soul has been yearning to be together and uh, meet with you. Um, I, I, just to be real honest with you, you all know that I'm pretty, pretty straightforward about it all. Our team is tired. You know, our team has worked hard, and um, we've just continued to see the Lord has, has put breath in our sails, wind in our sails, and um, it's, been, it's been really neat. It's been good. Um, one of the reasons why I like the team is they, I mean, they're, they're leaving their families. You, most of them are, well, all of them are coming by themselves, leaving their families to come up here and serve like they are. And we don't need to take that for granted. And I, I just really appreciate you all, everybody, for coming and doing this, making this happen the way you are. Thank you very, very much. We love you and we miss you. Um, I thought today I would preach a little bit about a, what, what I've observed so far in all of this. Um, from our church and from, from around the area. There's three things that I wrote down. Everybody's saying these things. I, I'm, I'm just ripping them and copying them and pasting them. It, it's just cliche by this time. But what we've learned is, what I've observed so far is, we are adaptable, right? We're able to adjust to new conditions. We are adaptable. That's good. I think we need to be adaptable. We are resilient, Right? Um, we're able to withstand or recover quickly from difficult conditions. Uh, we've, in this church, we've been, we've been kind of acclimated to that a little bit over the last 10 years. So we're, we're resilient, we're, applicable, uh, we're adaptable, we are, we are resilient. And what I've learned mostly is three, we are, we are truly the body of Christ. We, we are truly the body of Christ. He, he is... He is our, our Lord and our Master, our Savior, and we are His body. I, I've seen this congregation, I've seen all of you um, become that body disjointed and separate, but we are the body. Um, and He is preeminent over all of us. He is preeminent over the situation. Um, that word preeminence 
is a word that uh, came across my mind in, in, in kind of a prayer time this week. And it was something that stuck out to me. Christ is superior. He is surpassing all others. And I think because of what's happened with the resilience, the adaptability, the, the way that the body of Christ has truly been the holy temple of God during this time, we've truly seen how, how truly awesome and superior Christ is over all things. And so I want to talk about that in Scripture for a moment. It's First, Col uh, first Colossians. <laughs> it's Colossians chapter 1, excuse me, Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. You may be familiar with this scripture. Um, it's pretty cool. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Right? Now, let's look at that. I'm going to break it down a little bit. I'm just going to exhort straight from the scripture today, all right, taking you right through Colossians. He, Christ, is the head of the body, the church, all right? I think there were a lot of people in the clergy and in leadership of churches that thought they were the head of the church. Uh, matter of fact, I don't even know if it's true, but I, I saw something and it was just passing through Facebook and it was that uh, some, of the, some of the priests and the cardinals and the bishops and even, even all the way up in the Catholic Church, they told their congregants, hey, you can just pray yourself for repentance. You don't have to come to confession, just pray yourself. And then I was like, what? We've been doing that for ages. <laughs> so the, the, the head of the church is not, and you guys know this, right? The head of the church is not us, the leaders of the church. The head of the church is Christ, Jesus our Master, our Lord, our Savior. So is the church not important? No, we are important because we are the body of Christ, right? If He's the head, we are the body. We, we need to gather as the body. He desires us to be together, right? So, but we don't need to forget that the body is not the head. The head is the head. Christ is the head of the church. Who, Jesus, is the beginning. He is the beginning of the church. He is the head of the body. He is the beginning. He is the firstborn from the dead. We're going to read later that he was also the firstborn among us, right? He is the firstborn from the dead that in all things he may have the preeminence. Now, what does that mean? We're alive in Christ. We are dead to ourselves. We're alive to Christ. But we celebrated just a few weeks ago that Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. He's the only one that went to death and rose again from the dead. And because he's the firstborn of the dead, he has made us alive in himself. So if he is the head, he is the beginning, he's the firstborn, then it's in him that we have life from the deadness and the wretchedness of our sin and even deadness and wretchedness of this blasted disease that we're dealing with. Amen. He is the firstborn. We are alive because of him, the head of the body. Now you all know this, but there's something about preaching and talking and sharing the understood truths of our faith that just gets in your soul and rises up and makes this holy, holy de declaration in us that, man, God is still God and Christ is still Christ. All of that that I just said, everyone should already know. If you didn't know that, it's preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That should be known, but we need to be reminded that we as the body have the head, Jesus Christ, who is the beginning, firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence, superiority, surpassing all others. Jesus, the head of our body, the head of the church, in all things, in all all things has the preeminence. He has the superiority. He has the authority. He is a number one. And everything, everything, all things falls under his leadership. He's proving it these days. Nothing else will work together unless Jesus is superior. There is an order in the kingdom of God. And, and let, me, let me say this too. 
when you were born into life with Jesus Christ, you were not just born into salvation, you were birthed into the kingdom of God. It's an eternal kingdom. It's, an, it's a kingdom that will never end. It's a, continue, a kingdom that has been from the beginning and will be till the end. That's why Jesus said he is the door. All others who come in around the door are thieves and robber, robbers. The only way you can get into the kingdom of God is through Jesus, the head of the church, the superior preeminent one, right? Jesus is the one. Now, why do you say that about the kingdom? When you were born into the kingdom, you are a citizen of this world and of this earth, but every one of us will die one day. And when we die, the kingdom we live in will be the kingdom we live in for eternity. So you're either in the kingdom of sin, hell, death right now, or you're birthed by Jesus into the kingdom of God. And when we die, we will transition from breath in this body to breath in the eternal kingdom of God. So the kingdom is alive and well today with Jesus as the head and with the body of believers as the, as the, as the living beings on earth. This kingdom will never end. This kingdom of God will never, ever be established anywhere else but right here and for eternity and by the way if you don't know it the kingdom will come in all of its glory in that day and we'll rule and reign with christ here on earth in a new heaven in a new earth that's a whole nother subject but why do i bring all that up i bring all that up because if you don't know and if i don't know that jesus is preeminent over all things i question whether we're even born again. I question whether we even know that Jesus is our master and Lord. We may say he was a good teacher and I want to go to heaven one day, but I live in a world and in a kingdom and in an understanding of the truth where Jesus is preeminent, I'm born into his kingdom, and all things work in him and through him. Let me read you some scripture to prove that. Colossians chapter 1 Verse 15 through 17, it speaks of this order that I'm talking about of Christ being first. There is an order in the kingdom of God. Everything seems out of order these days. Everything seems absolutely, completely chaotic. But there, no, there is an order, and that order is just fine. Here it is, Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on the earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. There's an order to all this. So listen, we're, and I'm going to get into this a little bit more in just a second, but we feel like things are out of order. Things are chaotic. There's nothing normal there's nothing in control we certainly feel out of control i do i i've never lived in a time and i'm a young very young 40 year old most of you are much older and wiser than me some of you are shortly older than me and wiser than me younger and wiser than me but i've never lived in a time where i can't go and do what i want to do when i want to do it you know, and I, I'm just like everybody else. I want to, I want to, and, and some of you have, so I'm not throwing any stones. Some of you have lived in times of desperation. Some of you have lived through times that I can't even understand. And, and I don't mean to say that flippantly or anything. I'm just making it personal here for me. I, I, maybe you did live, maybe you've been delivered, I don't know. But we're living in a time where we can't go and do what we want to do when we want to do it. And, and it makes you feel out of control. It makes you feel like there's, no order there's chaos there's we've lost some liberties and freedoms during this time jesus hasn't lost his liberties and freedoms god hasn't lost in christ the preeminence of all this are we citizens of a world that is out of order or are we citizens of a world that is in order. In other words, yes, we're citizens of this earth. We're American citizens. Most of us are living here in, 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 in all of this as citizens of this planet. Maybe you're not living in America, but you're a citizen of the world. 
But our home as believers is in Christ, and it's separate from this. And God, help us to let that seep inside of us so that we don't get rocked by the chaos of the world. We don't get rocked by all the things that are going on. Verse 15, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. If you're looking for God in all this, you're going to find Him in Jesus Christ. Here's why. Verse 16, For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for Him. There's some deep theology right there. There's some very deep waters of truth right there. One of them is very simply, and I'm going to step in it, and I'm going to come right back out of it. We believe that Christ is the beginning and the end. We believe what verse 16 says, and let it get deep in you. All things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. Thrones, dominions, or powers. Christ was the okay factor for all of that. You say, was Christ the okay factor for the coronavirus? Something you need to think about. Is Christ the okay factor for all this uncertainty? Something you need to think about. Take your time and study that statement and reflect on it. Verse 16 and many other verses in the Bible about how God is God and Christ is Christ. Something to think about. Why are you saying it that way, Pastor? Here's why. Because if your hope is in anything but Christ being the first and the last, you will, like me, like all of us, you will be standing on ground that will shake and will cause you to have lots and lots of problems. So I choose to stand on the solid rock of Christ Jesus, having full authority and preeminence over all of this, trusting Him that He is bringing about His will in it all. That's the only hope I can have right now. That's the only sure, solid rock of faith and hope that I can have. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what the next 10 hours holds. I don't know what's going to happen by the time this Facebook Live is over. But what I do know is Christ has okayed every bit of it from this point forward. And he did okay every bit of it up to this point. The breath I just took, he said okay to it. The breath I'm about to take, he, he just said okay to it. Because at any point in time when Christ says, all right, no more for you, Sean. You know what? I've surrendered to his preeminence in my life. It's his, not mine. So I'm going to stand in the assurance that he has my best at hand, even when it's good or bad. Christ's superiority over my life is what I'm leaning on, is what my hope is in. He was in the beginning, He will be in the end. He has allowed, He has okayed it all for us to be right here. Don't lose sight of that. Because as soon as we lose hope in times like this, that's when our souls begin to fall apart. Don't let it happen. What hope we can have in Jesus, nothing gets by Him. Did you hear me? Nothing gets by Jesus. It may get past me or you. You may run something by me, but you're not going to get it past Jesus. He okays it. He never sleeps. Jesus never sleeps. He is never off task. He's never behind. He's always at the beginning. He's ahead of this. We, 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 we're feel, we feel like we're right here. He's already ahead of it. We, we feel hopeless right now. We, feel, we just feel distraught right now. Christ is way beyond it. He's working through it. That's hope. Now look, if you're listening to this today and you're thinking, okay, I, I needed something to put my hope in. I, look, 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 just put it in Jesus. Put it in Jesus. Put it in Jesus. You don't have the church to put it in anymore. Can't put it in me. I'm on a TV screen. You can call me, you can text me, but you can't put it in me. You can't put it in any other pastor. You can't put it in a building. You surely can't put it in a government. I know they sent you $1,200 stimulus, but that's gone. Can't put it in your car because you can't go nowhere. The only place you can put your hope is in Jesus Christ. And don't stop it. Don't stop it. So let's back up. 
and look at another few scriptures before we wrap this up. Now, this scripture was written in this context. It was Paul and Timothy writing to the church at Colossae. Paul hears of their faith in Christ. He hears of them, how they've put their faith in Christ, and how faithfully they were exercising that faith. Epaphras was their pastor. Be glad I'm not Epaphras, right? Could you imagine Pastor Epaphras? Okay, Epaphras, Epaphras, however you say that, Epaphras, I think that Epaphras, I think that's the way to say it, Epaphras, yeah, Pastor Epaphras. That was their shepherd. Now what happened was Epaphras visited Paul in Rome while he was in prison, right? So he heads to Rome, he talks to Paul, he says, hey, you won't believe about, you won't believe this church in Colossae. They're faithful, they're full of hope, they, they believe Christ's preeminence, they are, they are walking it out. And he's writing to them and he's encouraging them in the first bit of the chapter here. And I want to just read 9 through 15 real quick. And then I want to exhort while I wrap this up. Verse 9. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power for all patience and suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. And it says again, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Jumping back up to verse 9. I join with Paul and Timothy and want to encourage you. I'm no Paul. I'm no Timothy. But I do have the joy of being a pastor to you. And I've heard of your faith, like verse 9. Since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and ask that you be filled with knowledge of His will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We've heard of your faith. And I'm praying for you. Sherelle and I are really, truly praying for you. But we're not just praying God help them to be settled at home. God help them to have, you know, patience with their kids who are not doing schoolwork right. God Help them financially when it's such a difficult time. No, no. I truly desire that you be filled with all knowledge of His will and all wisdom and understanding. Truly. Matter of fact, I want to pray into that as we end this today. I want to pray for just a few moments that very thing. So if you will, join me in prayer. Father, For Soma Church and all of those who may be watching today, I pray today that they be filled with all knowledge of your will. Some in this congregation are decision-making, making decisions about different things that they're facing, whether it's financial or it's it's a job or it's, it's family situations with schooling or it's college students that are, that, are, that are transitioning or high school students that are transitioning. There's so much things that, so many things that we need wisdom for. I ask you, God, to fill us with all knowledge of your will. And God, don't just fill us with the knowledge of your will. Help us to have wisdom and understanding. God, some in our congregation, some watching today, need wisdom and understanding of the knowledge. It's one thing to have, God, a set of plans before us. But Lord, we need the wisdom and understanding of how to apply it, how to walk it out. Give that wisdom and understanding to your people, Father. In verse 10, Paul says that you walk worthy of the Lord. That's good words. Fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. It's another prayer of mine today. 
That's another prayer. God, Christ is preeminent. So I'm going to pray that these things would work into your life too. I want to pray right into verse 10. So if you will, let me pray for you again. Lord, I do pray again that your people here at Soma Church or all across our community would walk worthy of what the Lord is doing in and around us. Lord, may we walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to you. May we be fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Father, the good work that you've put us to in teaching our children school, in having more common family time. Lord, the times that we're having to work from home and Zoom meetings are a part of our lives now. For, for, for the children who are transitioning, for all that we're dealing with, God, we want to walk worthy of the Lord. Give us the ability to walk worthy of the Lord, that we are fully pleasing to you. And we're fruitful in these good works. We know, God, by your word, that there is no fruit from us that is worth anything. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. God, give us good fruit by your spirit. Help us, God, to be full of you in these times. In verse 11, he goes on to say, Paul does, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power for, our, for, for all patience and long-suffering with joy. Yikes. <laughs> these guys knew, these guys truly knew what it was like to suffer. I mean, we, we can't go to Dick's Sporting Goods and we think we're suffering. We, we can't, we, we can't, we think we're suffering. This man was in prison right into a church that was being persecuted, that, that could very well be arrested and put in jail like he was. And the words coming out of his mouth in verse 11, that he wanted the people at Colossae to be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long-suffering with joy. He's writing in prison encouraging them. I want to pray into that too for you guys. I want to pray this for myself too. Strengthen us, O oh God, pray with me. Strengthen us, God, with all might. Strengthen us with all might, O oh God. Your might, your ability, we are your body. With your spirit, strengthen us, God, according to your power. Lord, can we please experience the power of Pentecost again where, where we experience your fullness coming into us. And we experience it not only from the evangelistic standpoint, but also from the, from the provision standpoint that we can be powerfully walking in this life. That your kingdom would come in us. That your kingdom would be in us. Not the kingdoms of this world, but your power, your ability, your kingdom. That our desires would be dead and your life would be alive in us. Your power would come out. And Lord, that we would have patience and long-suffering with joy. Lord, we wouldn't be grumbling. Lord, help us not to be grumbling in the patient process or to be grumbling in the long-suffering. Oh, I wish this would go. God, give us joy. God, give us joy. Give us joy by your ability and by your power. Give us joy. Help us to find Jesus, your preeminence in all of this. Your superiority and to know that we are surrendered to that authority in our lives. And the joy and the hope of our salvation is alive and well. Lord, we don't know what tomorrow holds as far as this transition of back to normalcy. Lord, give us patience and long-suffering with joy. Help us think of our, of our brothers before ourselves. Strengthen your people, God. And then the last thing I want to do is encourage you with verse 13 and verse 14. Verse 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. His preeminence has brought Paul to the place of encouragement 
has brought us to a point of prayer. But don't forget, He's delivered us. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. He has delivered us into His kingdom. He has given us redemption through His blood and has forgiven our sins. Amen. Christ is superior and is our Lord and life. Don't forget it. Verse 13 again. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. Amen. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. He's forgiven us. We are redeemed. And we're a party to His kingdom because of His preeminence. It was some scripture to encourage you this morning. Hopefully, the word has gotten deep in your souls. And you'll be encouraged today. Don't forget what I said in the very beginning. He is the head and we are the body. All things have come through him. I don't know what the next few moments hold, but he does. Therefore, I'm surrendered to him. Therefore, he is the Lord of my life. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Father, help us today lean into you even more. Looks like things may be shifting back a little bit in the next few weeks. Help us not forget what you've said during these times and what you've done during these times. Lord, I pray today that you would be with all your people across all the congregation. Bless them, God. I say that constantly in my prayers with you. I say it privately. I say it publicly. Lord, bless your people. Bless your people. Help them, God, know that you are alive and real and with them every day. Lord, they don't need me. I know I have a role to play, and I will. They don't need each other. I know they do have roles to play. We need community. We need gathering. But more than all of that, Jesus, we need you. Be real and true and honest and bless your people with your presence this day and all the days ahead. We love you and we bless you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, that's what I got today. I know you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. We're just going to do a short, just a real cold cut today. So it's going to be me waving my hand, saying I love you and I miss you.